Now that you've got an overview of the interface, let's start by creating a use case for a predictive model project. I'm going to go into the workbench here and I'm going to create a new use case. And so I can choose from predictive, from generative, code first, or application templates, which I mentioned before. Code first will actually start a notebook instance where you can actually do some uh, Jupyter based uh, notebook. Uh, applications. Generative is where we're gonna, we can build our generative uh, applications in uh, Agentic Playgrounds or vector databases uh, for RAG models. We're going to focus on predictive AI first and so I'm going to start by uploading some data. Um, I happen to have a CSV file that I'm going to upload and I'll just upload the file and I will choose from downloads and I've got a simple data set that I'm going to upload. We can also import from things like Snowflake from our, we can also import data from our AI catalog, we browse data and we've got an AI catalog here, a data registry. And we can connect to things like Snowflake, Databricks, BigQuery, um, SAP, SAP HANA, uh, we have a bunch of different connectors, but for now we are just going to focus on the CSV file that I had uploaded. And so what that's doing is registering there and registering in the platform. And then once it's registered, we'll be able to look at some data profile and explore the data and what it looks like. And we can do some additional data cleansing and uh, ELT type of uh, uh, processing as well. Okay, now that the file is uploaded and registered, when you upload the file or when you pull in a data set, it'll register it and it'll count up to 100%. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and rename this use case. I'm going to call it Stack Overflow Survey Test. And confirm. And now I'm going to go into this data set. And what we've got is a data and analysis of the data set that I've updated or uploaded. And we've got a histogram for each of these data sets, or sorry, each of these features in the data set. And I'm gonna show a summary here. So we've got an overall summary of the number of features, number of rows, and then we've got a data quality assessment, which I will touch on again here in a minute. Um, the first thing I wanna do, I've already chose, uh, shown the summary. So I've got that summary in there. And now I want to look at a histogram of one or two of the features. And so what we're looking at here is I double clicked on the histogram at the top of the feature and this will give you a larger view of that histogram. And what we can do is go in here and change this around and I'm gonna select just a different feature from this, uh, from this data set or this feature set. And it will give me the top uh, values or top values for that feature and a uh, histogram or graph of, of the number of values. The other thing that we can do is we look at, look at an aggregated table of the different values in that feature. And we can go from feature to feature and do the same thing here. And then go into that and we can have an even larger view of this. And so we can do some data exploration here this way or just data profiling. Um, look at our frequent values and then all of the values in that table or in that feature. So now I've done some exploration of the different features. I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna go back to the data preview here. And what I wanna do, so I've got the summary and then I wanna view details. And now I want to look at data uh, features that only have, or only features that have quality issues. So that's gonna pop up with these. And I just, from experience, I know that these are outliers and we're not going to worry about these. We'll probably trim these off after we do the, uh, the next step. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to um, the use case and I will proceed on with the next step. All right, so for the next step, I'm going to start modeling. Um, there's three ways of going about doing this. And the first one is to uh, either start with the use case assets and listing your, your data sets and you can click on these three dots and start modeling here. The other option or another option is to go into your data set or for, uh, when you're done doing your initial uh, feature exploration and uh, data profiling you can go into data action start modeling here. So the other thing that you can do is I'm going to go into this use case and I can create an experiment. 
all three of these workflows will, will start the modeling process and create a new experiment. But I wanted to show, showcase the three ways of doing that. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna click on create an experiment and I'm going to select the data set that I was just working with. And so that'll in, import that feature set. This will take a minute or so. And what'll happen after this is I'm gonna select a target and I'm going to uh, then start modeling. Um, this should be complete here in a minute or so. All right, so um, I'm gonna select a target feature and then I also want supervised learning. Uh, the target for this will be will be comp total. So I'm going to type in comp total here. So that's going to be our predicted target, and we're going to do a quick autopilot uh, RMSA accuracy. We have different options here for accuracy metrics, and then uh, training feature list. So the training uh, data set or feature set that I'm going to use is going to be informative features that have been identified by data robots. So we select and provide you different uh, different feature sets for the uh, for the model training. You can also do this manually. Uh, we, for autopilot, we tend to uh, take the um, the ones that are automatically identified uh, based on your data set and based on the analysis from from the, our platform. So I'm going to click next and get the ball rolling on this. Um, so we're going to do random sampling. We can do user by user defined prompting or automated grouping. For now, I'm going to leave that as random sampling. And I'm going to do a cross validation and I'm going to leave all these, the partitioning, um, I'm going to leave this all default. So now I'm going to click on start modeling. This will actually take a few minutes and this is where we actually start training a, a bunch of different models and I, on a subset of the data set and then as we identify champions or identify higher performing models, we then rank them. Um, I'm going to increase my processor usage here. So we have a maximum of 20. So that'll speed up the process. Um, I'm gonna pause and then come back because this will take a few minutes. We're training a, a bunch of different models, creating a leader, leaderboard, and then we will then come back when this is completed. Okay, now my models have finished training and I've got a leaderboard of the top performing models. And as you can see here right now, I've got one that's prepared for, uh, for deployment. So this was actually the highest ranking, uh, highest performing model. And uh, we also know that by the fact that it was trained on 100% of the data. So if you see the rest of these, we've got these trained on 64% of the data, um, 84, approximately 8,400 8, rows. Um, and so the top performant model from that group is then retrained on the top on the entire data set, training data set. And so um, that's why we have two entries right here. So now uh, I wanna dig into this model and look at the performance. We can compare that to some of the other ones, but let's look at things like feature impact and feature effects. We've got all of this plotted out here prediction explanations. So this provides a row by row breakdown of each feature. SHAP distributions, and it's loading that data. It's gonna take a second. And then we've got things like coefficients here. So we can um, provide the positive effect of the top 30 most impactful features. So we've got these different metrics to um, or these different explanations on, uh, on performance. And we've got lift charts here. So this will, this will compare um, predicted versus actual. As you can see, this is a very uh, high performing model where the predictions are actually close to or equal to the actuals. Then we've got uh, metric scores here, different types of metrics, and then uh, residuals here. So we've got a, a a plethora or a ton of different uh, metrics that we can that we can drill down into see the actual performance and how these models or this model is has or had performed. So now um, we've got a blueprint here as well that kind of it, that explains the logic flow of how this model is built, and then logs from when the models are uh, are run, and then we've got some information on the model. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to generate some predictions against this model. So now I'm gonna go in here, click on model actions, 
and make predictions. Now I'm going to upload another file. Again, we can use our some of our model training data, go to our data registry, or we can use our data wrangler, our data wrangler recipe to import data. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple and I am going to use this data set that I have obtained for this purpose. And what I'm going to do is wait for that to finish processing. And I'm going to accept defaults, add all features, put additional feature values and prediction results. And that should finish here in a few seconds. When the file is completed processing, you'll see this right here. And then you'll have the button here to compute and download predictions. So now this is going to run the predictions against that model and so we've got that data set so now I, oh, actually it's initializing the prediction job and then it'll run predictions all right now that the prediction job is completed you see this red the screen check mark with a timestamp and what we can do is we can download the predictions and we can either open these in a spreadsheet and look at them or what we can do is we can go back into our model, sorry, our use case. And let me go back up here if I can. So I'll go back into the use case here. And I'm going to add a data asset, upload a file. And this is the results file that I have. And so that's going to upload and then register. Shouldn't take too long since it's a small data set. And that's done. So now I'm going to open this and we can look at the data profile. And here we go. So we've got our prediction column here with all of our associated features. And we now have a, a trained model that we then register and then deploy. So we've created the model, trained it, and run test predictions, and now we can register and deploy that model.